Today, Reddit user Gadalan pointed out that it's 150 years since Bernard Riemann sadly left us, and we should do a Riemann integral in his honour. Okay. Integration is the opposite of differentiation, and it can also be used to find the area under a squiggly line or function on a graph. Okay, but you're Riemann and you haven't properly invented integration yet, so you're looking at the squiggly line and thinking, oh man, finding the area under this squiggly line is going to be super difficult. Do you know what would be easier? Finding the area of a rectangle. Okay, so we split up our graph or partition it, and then make it into all these different rectangles. And as you can see, there's a way of underestimating and a way of overestimating the area of this using rectangles. Tangles. I'm sure you can also see that the smaller we make those partitions, the more accurate an area we're going to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the upper sum, which is the overestimation, and make those partitions smaller and smaller and smaller until we get what's called the infimum, which is the lowest the upper sum could be. We're also going to do the same for the underestimation, or the lower sum. So we're going to keep making those partitions smaller, and the area is going to keep going up and up and up, and that's called the supremum of the lower sum. So the actual area underneath this curve is going to be sandwiched in between the infimum of the upper sum and the supremum of the lower sum. So that's the general gist of Riemann integrals, and now it's time to get our nerd on. Okay, integral from 2 up to 4, those are our boundaries of x plus 3, which is our function, dx, which I always thought it was just like a random thing that you shoved at the end of integrals, but actually it means with respect to x. So x is the thing that we're integrating. Side note, that integration sign is actually like an elongated s, and that's because it's like the sum of all the rectangles to find the area. Get it? Get it? Right, you gotta keep your head in the game when you're doing Riemann integration. There are four parts. We're gonna have to make our partitions, we're gonna have to do the upper sum, the lower sum, and then the sandwich bit. Part one partitions. Okay, so essentially for the partitions you're going to want to invent some kind of function that's going to make you smaller and smaller and smaller parts but goes between the boundaries of your integral. So our integral is going uh, from 2 to 4. k is this number that's just like running from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to this like mystical n number and we only want to partition between 2 and 4. So simplify this down, we get 2 plus 2k over n. Okay, think about what that's going to be when k is 0. Um, that's going to be 2 plus 0 over n, which is just 2. Okay, great, we're starting our boundaries at 2. And then if we get all the way up to n, k keeps going, gets to n, we're going to have 2 plus 2n over n, which would give us 2 plus 2, which is 4. Excellent, so we've made all of these partitions that are going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller smaller for all the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but by the time it gets to n, we finish at 4, and that's our boundaries for our integral. Round 2, upper sum. So it's good to keep in mind that our partitions are 2 plus 2k over n, that's essentially kind of the base or the breadth of the rectangles. Fantastic! So the upper sum is going to be the sum of the area of all of the overestimating rectangles. Now area of a rectangle is normally length times breadth, but our kind of breadth is each of these partitions, so that would be xk minus xk minus 1, which is the partition, take away the partition before it, um, and we're going to times that by the height, which will be the function of xk, because that's how you get the height on a graph function of it. Okay, so substitute in xk, do the function, substitute in xk minus 1, pepper in some help from our old friend Gauss, simplify down, and you should get 2 n plus 1 over n plus 10. I will make a kind of slow motion video on the simplifying down parts where I go through it step by step what I did and I'll link that like, I don't know, somewhere and put it in the description when I've done it. So check that out if you're struggling with the simplifying. Okay, so now we've got a formula for the partitions and a formula for the upper sum and we're ready for round three, lower sum. Okay. So our method for finding the lower sum is very similar to finding the upper sum. We want to sum together all of these rectangles, but these are the underestimating ones. So, we're going to do length times breadth, and here, the length, the length, breadth, I don't know, one of the sides is going to be xk minus xk minus 1, similar to last time. So that distance hasn't really changed. But this one here, instead of taking the taller one to make the rectangle, we're taking the smaller one. So that's going to be the function of xk minus 1. So that's the only change between the upper sum and the lower sum. Fantastic. So substitute into this bad boy here, we've got the sum um, from k running from 1 all the way up to n of our f, 
of x minus 1 uh, times by x k minus x k minus 1 and if you again simplify down use Gauss you will end up with 2 n plus 1 over n sounds familiar minus 4 over n plus 10. Woohoo! So we've got the partitions, we've got the upper sum, we've got the lower sum, we're ready for the final bit, the sandwichy part. Round 4. Finish him. Okay, so we're looking at the infimum, which is the lowest the upper sum could be, um, so we're just gonna run the limit as n tends towards infinity of our upper sum. The n plus 1 over n is gonna just become 1, and we're gonna be left with 2 plus 10, which is 12! And then again for the supremum of the lower sum, which is the highest the lower sum could be, we're gonna run that n all the way up to infinity to get our limit, and the n plus 1 over n becomes 1, that 4 over n is just gonna kind of disappear, so we've got ooh, 2 plus 10, which is 12. Now what could be sandwiched between 12 and 12? 12! The answer is 12. Here's to you, Riemann. Thanks for keeping us mathematicians busy for the past 150 years. By the way, here's how to do the same sum in four lines. But it's mine! You can't have it.